There's fish. See it? Feels big though. Whoa. That's a huge kokanee. Wow. Holy cow. Oh my god, I can't believe I got that kokanee out of this lake. That thing is huge. Wow. Look at that kokanee. That's a way to start the day. <laughs> on the lead core nice so today I thought I'd cover a topic that I get asked about frequently which is why don't I use lead core and I have a fish here on the lead core rod so I thought I'd run these two side by side talk about the comparisons of the two tactics for getting down to kokanee without using downriggers that is my traditional dropper rig versus the lead core that I'm using here and start talking about the advantages and disadvantages and why I prefer droppers over lead core. Very hard to sometimes determine if there's a fish there on lead core, but I feel some resistance, so gonna keep pressure on it. There he is. Now he's starting to shake, head shake a little bit. Got him. All right, first kokanee of the day on the leg core. Already got a couple on the droppers this morning. So one thing you notice is it took a long time to get that fish in. Uh, just because I have to let out so much more line to get down to the same depth than when using droppers. And I'm not even using that heavy of a weight on that dropper. Uh, only two ounces. But I can get down to that effective fishing depth really fast without putting out a ton of line. One of the things that I like most about dropper rigs is just how quick I can redeploy. So I have this at the surface and I can pretty much just free spool this down slowly uh, without having to pull on it or do anything, just put my thumb on here and it will take itself down to the depth that I need to get to. And I can get down there really quickly so I'm back in that strike zone very fast. Okay, so let's compare that with deploying this lead core line where the line is so stiff that I actually initially kind of have to put quite a bit of effort to get it to start coming out. Once you get about one color's worth out, it'll start to feed out a lot easier, but I still have to pull it all by hand. So it takes a lot longer to deploy. It's just more of a hassle. And that means it's taking longer to get down into the strike zone. Uh, so I'm just effectively fishing for a lesser amount of time. So now that I got one color out, now I can just kind of feed it. The weight of the line will help carry it back. As you can see, this is taking a lot longer. Just to get three colors out to get down on that 25 to 30 foot zone. Fish, fish, big fish. Dang. Nice hit. <laughs> so let's compare and contrast the uh, two rod and reel setups I'm using here for Kokanee today. On this side here, man, that guy is really putting up a fight. I'm just using my dropper rig, which is a lot more compact looking uh, for several reasons. The main reason being is the line that I'm using is just 10 pound monofilament, which has a relatively low diameter compared to the lead core. So I don't need that big oversized reel uh, like I do with the lead core. 
Uh, I also just don't need as much backbone in the rod. I've noticed that lead core rods run out of power a lot more. They just tend to load up more just because of the weight of that lead core and the drag of it. Uh, so I can go with a lighter rod, which makes it more fun to fight these fish. All right, let's get this guy in the net. Not quite ready yet. There we go. Man, that is a tank fish. Man, look at that. That is gorgeous. That's a nice size kokanee. Ooh, there's fish. Nice. Nope, he's off. That's the common problem with this uh, lead core. Seem to be able to leverage the hooks off a little bit easier just because there's zero stretch in that line. Fish. On the leg core. So you can see on the leg core, it's a quite a bit bigger reel just to accommodate that wide diameter on that line. Another thing is, as I'm bringing this fish in, it's harder for me to feel it. I have a little bit more backbone on the rod, which might explain that, uh, but I still have a relatively soft tip. But I also have to reel in a long way to get it, this fish in, just because of how far this thing is deployed back there. Oh, I got him. Another dandy kokanee. So my landing ratio does tend to be a little bit lower on lead core. I don't run snubbers and maybe I would have a slightly higher landing ratio if I did. There you go, nice size coke. And yeah, you can see quite a bit of size difference in the reels there just because of the nature of how thick that line is. Okay, the lead core that I'm using today is a tough line 18 pound lead core. If you don't know what lead core is, it's basically a braided line, uh, hollow on the inside with a lead core, a very thin, almost pencil lead thin core of lead. Uh, this is the tough line, there's their normal lead core. It comes in different uh, pound ratings. This is the 18 pound rating. And the reason I run 18 pound is that is the one that you get the fastest drop with and uh, you get down quicker with it putting out less line. So they, it's color coded. You can see it goes from blue, you know, it's here it's going to brown, it'll go to pink and a, bu a bunch of various other colors. So with the 18 pound um, at these trolling speeds of one to 1.5 miles per hour, I'm getting about eight foot drop for every color I deploy. So I'm trying to get down that 25 to 30 foot range. So I'm putting out about three colors and that's getting me down there. They have a micro lead series as well, which is basically a thinner version of their traditional lead core line like I'm using today. Uh, but I found that that one, I get a lot of little kinks and the lead will protrude through the braid. Uh, it doesn't compromise the integrity of the line strength overall because the strength uh, in the line is in the braid itself. Uh, but it does make it annoying for reeling it up and it gets hung up on your guides. And in fact, I have a kink that's developed today and I will show you that, uh, what happens when you get a kink in the line. But on my line counter, I basically have 150 feet of line out in order to get down to 25 feet. Whereas here I have 50 to 60 feet on the dropper rig using a two ounce lead to get down to where I need to. So I'm really fishing two very different areas. Um, this one's really close to the boat. This one's much further behind.
So one thing that should be clear is that I don't necessarily think that lead core is more ineffective uh, than dropper rigs. I just prefer dropper rigs because of those things that I highlighted. But I'm catching just as many fish on the lead core rig today as I am on the dropper rig. Same amount of bites, good consistent action. And there are definitely situations where I would run lead core. One of those situations is there are several lakes in my region that have restrictions on the size of lead you can use or the type of lead you can use and so it's illegal for me to use those little cannonballs and in those situations lead core line really is my only option another option where uh, lead core really makes a lot of sense is with folks that are using paddle kayaks because they really struggle uh, with getting those dropper rigs tangled as they try and deploy back, they get a lot of jerky motion. It's a lot easier to get a smoother, more consistent uh, drop back when you're using lead core than it is with those dropper rigs. You can just open the bale, pull out a little bit of line at a time and not have to worry about it uh, snagging up on itself. Yeah. There's fish there. Okay, well, let me explain how I'm rigging up the lead core versus the dropper rig. I have lots of videos on how I rig the dropper rig, and I'll put links to those. So what you can do with the lead core is you can actually take and slide back that braid. I do about six to eight inches, and I pinch off the lead in there, and I'm just left with the braided line. That lets me tie knots really easily. So I'll tie in uh, into a duo lock here, and then I'm running a bumper here about 24 inches long. And that puts some space between the lead core line and my dodger, like that. And that lets it move side to side a little bit more because that stiffer lead core line might inhibit the action. And I just clip in a dodger and then six to eight inches to my lure. I believe that's number 10 for me today, which closes out my limit. Well, I got a full limit today, including several really large kokanee. I'm really impressed with the size of the fish I caught today on both dropper rigs and on lead core rigs. So if you have any questions regarding both of these rigs, just let me know. I'll put links to the lead core line I was using below, as well as links to the videos I do on how to rig dropper rigs. If you guys have any questions, just shoot me in the comments below. Otherwise, I will... See you next time out on the water. Have a good one. Bye.